USB 4 V2 is here, and in this video, we're going to be testing an external GPU using this new protocol. And I'm really excited about this for upcoming Ryzen powered handhelds. When it comes down to it, we've seen a lot of handhelds hit the market with USB 4, and it does enable some really fast connection speeds up to 40 gigabits per second. But USB 4 V2 is much different. It can actually double that speed up to 80 gigabits per second. And right now, I've got the new Minisforum MS-S1 that does have two USB 4 V2 ports around back. This is going to be awesome because uh, we can get much faster connection speeds using an external GPU. And once we start seeing version 2 come to handhelds, it's going to allow us to kind of get real close to desktop performance with an eGPU. And for my testing, I'm going to be using the all-new Razer Core X Thunderbolt 5 dock because it does offer really fast connection speed when compared to a regular Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 eGPU dock. I've also slapped in an RTX 5080 with a 1000 watt power supply, which is definitely overkill, but it's here just in case I wanted to go with a higher end card. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Real quick, before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a rundown on the differences between USB 4 V1 and USB 4 V2. V1 can do up to 40 gigabits per second, and when it comes to charging, it'll do up to 100 watts, but there are some devices out there with extended power ranges that do up to 240. USB 4 V2 is much faster, coming in with 80 gigabits per second, and with asymmetrical connections, it can do up to 120 in one direction and 40 in the other. This also does up to 240 watts PD charging out. So, you know, charging a laptop over USB 4 V2 will work out much better than, you know, 100 watts on USB 4 V1. Jumping right in here, just wanted to show you exactly what we've got going on with this system. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This is also paired up with that Radeon 8060Si GPU, but we're not going to be utilizing that in this video because we've got the RTX 5080 connected over USB 4 V2 using this Thunderbolt 5 dock, 16 gigs of VRAM. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, this is some of the fastest speeds that I've seen out of an eGPU. What we're going to jump into here is GPU-Z. I just want to show you exactly what it's running at. So we'll swap over to the RTX 5080. Out of the box, this card should work with PCIe X16 5.0, but using this Thunderbolt 5 eGPU dock, it's only at X4 4.0. So we will be losing a bit, but we're still getting some really good speeds when you compare it to Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 V1. And to view this, I use an application known as CUDA-Z. And I do want to compare this to USB 4, just regular USB 4 version 1. If we go to performance, right here, CUDA-Z is going to show our connection speed, host to device and device to host. Over on the left hand side, we've got USB version 2. On the right hand side, USB version 1. Same PC, we're just using those V2 back ports for USB 4 V2, front ports for USB 4 V1. And you can already see that we're getting a much faster connection speed using that USB 4 V2. In fact, if we do a little bit of calculation, it's up to 56 gigabits per second on V2 and only up to 30 gigabits per second on V1, which in theory should allow us to get a much faster connection speed to our GPU and allow much better performance. And I do think that in the future, once we get these eGPUs with like uh, PCIe X8 at least, we're going to see better speeds here. It's not close to 80 gigs, but it's much better than we've ever had with Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4 V1. 
And one thing I always get asked to do is run synthetic benchmarks. And when it comes to synthetics, you're not going to see a huge degradation in performance on an eGPU. Now, of course, there is a bit here with Steel Nomad at the top. We've got USB 4 V2 at the bottom, USB 4 V1. But it's not a huge decrease in performance. And that's because this is a synthetic benchmark. When it comes to real world performance, that's where we're going to see a huge difference. Checking out Time Spy. Over V2, we got a 21,014. Over V1, 20,478. So yeah, I mean, with the synthetics, not a major difference between the two. But I wanted to move over just to a side-by-side -side comparison because there are some games that just don't work very well using USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 eGPUs. And this has been kind of the case for a long time, especially with the Sony ports. Now, some of them have been fixed, but what we have here is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. 1440p, no DLSS, very high settings. On the left-hand side, USB 4 V1 with that RTX 5080. On the right-hand side, USB 4 V2 with the RTX 5080. And right off the bat, you can tell that USB 4 V1 is really struggling with this game. But when connected over USB 4 V2, we're seeing some really good frame rates here for an external GPU. With that RTX 5080 connected over USB 4 V1, we only average 36 FPS, but over with V2, we're up to 108. This is a huge jump, and it's not with every game, but there are a bunch of games out there that just don't function properly connected over something like Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 V1. But it looks like it's starting to change with USB 4 V2. Now just moving into some performance over V2, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1440p Ultra with no DLSS. And usually over Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, I do have to drop some of these settings down, but I'll show you. We're at 1440p and it goes to custom because I guess it's defaulting thinking that I have an AMD card. We do need to turn this completely off. We'll apply. So no DLSS, Ultra settings, and this game is running absolutely amazingly. Of course, if we had this RTX 5080 in a full-size PC with an X16 uh, 5.0 slot, we'd probably get better performance with these settings here. But given that this is connected over a USB 4 connection, it's pretty awesome. And yeah, I mean, with a mini PC, it's great to have something like this, you know, on the desk with an eGPU. But I think nowadays, with all of the handhelds on the market, once we see USB 4 V2 and even Thunderbolt 5 come to some Intel handhelds in the future, this is kind of what eGPUs should be used for. You can connect this to your laptop also if you want to, but with a handheld, I mean, you're on the go with it, playing on the iGPU, and then when you get home, you can dock the system and really crank those settings up. Now, I want to check out some ray tracing on this. So we're actually just going to take it all the way up to ray tracing overdrive. So this will enable path tracing, and we're going to leave DLSS 4 at auto. I'm not going to enable frame gen just yet. We'll see how this performs. Oh, wow. I was actually expecting it to fall right on its face. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but we are using some DLSS here. So it's set to auto, and it's probably going down to at least balanced mode. Just kind of adjusts it on the fly for us. It still looks great. And we're using ray tracing overdrive here with path tracing. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you can see that the TGP on our uh, RTX 5080, the total graphics power is getting close to 300 watts here in this eGPU dock. So yeah, I mean, it's really putting down some good performance like it is given that we're connected over USB 4. And since I was already here, I figured I'd just enable some DLSS 4 multi-frame gen. We're set to X4 using the same settings, so 1440p, ray tracing overdrive. We've just enabled frame generation. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're generating a ton of fake frames, but we're averaging over 200 FPS with this setup using an eGPU. And the final game I figured I'd test here is Borderlands 4. This one still needs some optimizations, and on a ton of different systems that I've tested, I haven't seen great performance, usually testing on lower-end systems. But with this RTX 5080 connected over USB 4 V2, we're at 1440p, very high settings, and DLSS is set to quality, really good frame rate. I mean, we're over 80 FPS on average. Every once in a while, I do notice a little bit of a hiccup, but I never saw it go under 60 FPS. 
Overall, really impressed with USB 4 V2, and personally, I cannot wait to see it come to handhelds. Uh, something like the Next Legion Go or even the ROG Ally should get V2, or maybe even something faster. Who knows what's down the road? But right now, this was the only system that I was able to test on with USB 4 version 2, and it's working absolutely amazing with an eGPU like this. I did plug in just a regular USB 4 or a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU, and we're seeing really the same kind of speeds that we would if it was USB 4 because the connection speed inside of the eGPU is really tailored towards that Thunderbolt 4 speed set. So a Thunderbolt 5 eGPU is really where it's at for V2. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, would you like to see something like this come to your handheld? Are you waiting for something a bit faster? And if there's anything else you want to see running on a setup like this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.